What's up everybody, my name is Galston Anthony and finally, I finally did it, started my own YouTube channel of 8-Track Pictures. And today I'm gonna be reviewing the Canon C200, the 4K camera. But before I get into this beauty over here, You're a monster. I wanna say that, look, I understand the studio is actually my living room, so it's not quite a studio. I'm trying to figure out how to build it. It is my first set, so I'm gonna get into it. I did this pink, purplish type of color. Gay! and it's green on the floor and a light on this side, but I'm trying to figure it out. It's why you fail. But anyway, let's get into what matters. The Canon C200, so I'm gonna run through five things. I got a tablet right here because, um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna remember everything off the top of my head, so I'm gonna, I might just go through my script to remember some things, right? So we're gonna go through five things, and these five things are the specs, ergonomics, color grading abilities, who the camera is for, and is it worth the buying? Now running through the spec, this Canon camera over here is a cinema camera. Now I need you to understand that a cinema camera and a DSLR shooting cine mode is completely different. You have a completely different texture. Of course! Just putting it out there. Cinema camera 4K 12-bit 422 at 25 frames per second, 10-bit 422 at 50 frames per second, and then it goes to XAVC or MP4 at 8-bit 420, 60 frames, 120, and that's really annoying. That part of the XAVC at 8-bit. And you blow it! The autofocus system on this is actually pretty decent. Well, it's decent because I've used other Canon cameras such as the 1DX2, not the 3, the 1DX2, which I think personally outperforms this one, but it has that face auto, auto, what do they call it? The face auto, whatever they call it. No, I'm gonna put it on the screen somewhere where it tracks just the face. So if you actually move out of screen and back in screen, it will remember your face. That is one really great feature about it. And another thing that I love about it, and I've heard quite a few things that you can actually put your own ND filters on it, but this automated ND filter is the future. All right, I think it's a six stop, if I remember off the top of my head, six stop ND filter. Imagine you actually just shooting and actually just changing the ND filter without actually moving your ISO. That is definitely a plus on this camera. The ergonomics of this camera is wonderful. Like for example, everything is so easy to find. You get the ND filter over here. You have the peaking, the zebra and the WFM. ISO gain, shutter and display is all here. It's very easy to go through. And also the menu system. Ah, let me turn that on. Once you hit the menu button, everything becomes quite easy to run through. I usually just go to the continuous autofocus over there and uh, choose what I need. Face priority, that's the thing I was speaking about in the, the spec sheet. And also, if you go to the third icon there at the top where you have the initializing of the card, you just hit the button and you choose what you want to initialize, whether it's the SD or the CFast card, and so forth and so forth and so forth. Another thing I love about this camera, ergonomically speaking, is the XLR input. So you have obviously the uh, XLR input one and input two. I tell you, it's so much better than having a DSLR where you use that little pin and you can only put one microphone at a time. It's a complete difference. It's a game changer. It might not be a big thing for you, but one day when you want to have two people speaking at the same time, but you have one camera or even two cameras, you use a DSLR as your B cam, it really, really, really does come into handy. And also on this side here, where you want to put up the volume, boom, just put up the volume. With a DSLR, if you find out the volume is too low, you actually have to stop recording and then get into the menus and then pick up the volume to see if it's right. And if maybe somebody was speaking too low, then boom, you gotta cut them and go through that again. Bye! For the C200, you don't have that. The battery is what shines on this camera. Right now I'm using the Canon BP-A30, which is the smaller version because there is the A60 version of this camera, of the battery rather. And it actually lasts up to two hours depending on what mode you shoot. But if I pull out this big boy over here, I'm definitely shooting at 12-bit RAW, and that's what takes most of the power of the camera. And two hours on a camera, I'm, if, if, you, if it's a bad day, you go one hour 30. That's what shines on this thing, as opposed to you having a DSLR, which does a whole lot less time than this baby over here. What really makes me happy is that I could tell before, the night before, if I forgot to charge, how far is my battery. I don't have to insert it and find out much later. Everything just works with a touch of a button. The difference between a cinema and a DSLR camera, that's why you gotta enjoy a camera like this. Going to point number three, color grading abilities. 12-bit, 12-bit, 12-bit. That's all I could say about this camera. This camera shines 
well with the 422 12-bit. Although sometimes I wish it was a 444 12-bit, but the 422 does so much justice on it. As you can see on screen where I have a flat ungraded one, it kind of looks boring, but then compare that with the graded one. I slapped on a LUT, to be honest. I slapped on a LUT, but it worked just fine. And look at the dynamic range of this camera. This was transcoded to C-Log2. I think I used this on C-Log3, but it interpreted it after I put in post into C-Log2 so that I can get that dynamic range. As you know, that C-Log2 has the most dynamic range and boom, you have the perfect color abilities. Did my, oh man, this thing went off. Before I explain who the camera is for, what I generally shoot are weddings, right? Weddings, maybe short documentaries, sometimes short films. But I would never use this camera for a wedding, right? Why I say that, although it has the 8-bit 420 Kodak, which is enough for you to shoot a wedding, it does sometimes become cumbersome, unless, of course, you intend to put this thing on a tri tripod. I almost said tripod. Tripod, then that's fine. But I use the other camera, the 1DX2 for that, and I will review that in a later stage. But I would say this will be good if you want to use the raw Kodak and you want to shoot like maybe corporate videos or you want to shoot short films or anything related to that where you can control the lighting, then this camera is definitely for those people. I think the XAVC Kodak could be used as a B cam, yes, as a B cam to the 1DX2, but I would generally use it as an A cam for corporate or maybe a short documentary. Yes, it is worth the buy. Shut up and take my money. Although there are cameras like the C300 Mark III that just came out with the 4K 120 RAW, and this just, just 4K 25, 12-bit. I know that's a little bit of a bummer. And then you also have the C500 II that also came out that is at 6K or 5.9K if I'm not mistaken, RAW as well. This baby is still worth the buy. This thing now in South African rands costs about... 100 to 110,000 Rand right now since the price has dropped. I think it's because of the C500 and the C303 that came in, but it's definitely worth the buy because it's a workhorse and you know Canon, they never let you down. It's a very reliable camera. I've never had overheating issues. I could take this thing anywhere, anytime, and I know I can rely on this camera. So it's for those people that know that they get jobs every single time and will easily pay itself off. This camera is a super 35 4K 12-bit 422 camera. Now that part is a love and hate relationship that I have. Why do I have that love and hate relationship? See, I'm so used to using a full frame camera. I come from the world where I use the 1DX2 a lot and the DSLR size is amazing. But the super 35 frame is a whole lot smaller, meaning if I'm using my 50 mil lens and I'm just going to thumb suck the number, it feels like I'm in by say 70 millimeters instead of being at 50 frames so it does get annoying because prime is the way i go using a a zoom camera you'd probably want to use the 18 to 35 but because of the cumbersome size it sometimes is too shaky for me so it doesn't have things like in-body stab stabilization but you have to really have a steady hand for it but the 4k 12 bit 422 kind of like makes you feel at ease because you could just grade it and make the camera feel really really good so that is like a i put that at the end because i forgot to say that in the beginning so yeah that will come to the end of my video anyway you got the point and coming to the conclusion of this video i thank you for supporting my channel at this stage i don't know what they do they say hit the notification button or subscribe do all those things and make sure that you follow me and i will be sure to put up more videos more about the camera maybe the next episode will be what i love and hate about the canon c200 actually let me make that a challenge five things i love and five things i hate about this my name is galson anthony the best to ever do it and make sure you follow me on instagram as well that is galson.anthony or galson underscore anthony and I'm always behind the things, but make sure you follow me.